Hello and uh, welcome to this video, another video on expected goals, but this time an accurate video on expected goals. Um, the last video I did was um, accurate at the time, I thought. Uh, the theory was all there, but some of the figures were a bit um, a bit out from what I can now see. Um, and this is based on uh, a comment from one of our one of our members, and it it showed um, Herbie commented here and showed that some of the yeah some of the averages were off. And I think when I copied over some of the the formulas, they'd went a bit wrong. And when I checked back this morning, I don't think I dragged down all the all the cell references, so it just got a bit messy. Um, and I only saw this um, this comment yesterday. So just to show that I do read the comments and do take notice, and I'm happy to admit when any of my figures are wrong. So I've gone back through uh, XG and um, I, I read redid it for last weekend. It does show different figures for the Premier League, but I thought there's no point showing you that because those games are gone. So why not have a look at the Championship for tonight? Because I was planning on doing some predictions for tonight anyway. So what we've got here is... Tonight, as in the 22nd of February, there's a pretty full championship uh, fixture list. So what I've done is I've gone through and scraped together the usual data that we use for the Poisson. You're probably all familiar with it by now. But instead of using goals for and goals against, average goals for, average goals against, I've used uh, XG goals. So um, XG for, XG away, and um, XG against at home, XG for, XG away against away oh man I'm tired today I was going to do a, a sort of face video um, but I'm so knackered my eyes are, the bags are bigger than they usually are so I, I didn't want to scare you with that but that's why I'm stuttering a lot sorry about that uh, so yeah so the usual stuff basically goals for goals against averages um, home and away and then we've got that turned into an attacking and defensive strength home and away and that's what feeds the Poisson model and gives us our predictions. So the difference here being, as with the previous XG goals, instead of just average goals and uh, for and against, we've done XG goals for and against. But the format's the same apart from that. It's just that these figures have changed. There's less data than there looks to be on the um, on the other ones as well because they're already average. You don't we don't need to have goals for goals against and average goals for and average goals against because with the uh, XG they're always average because obviously you can't score an expected goal so they're already averages so that makes it a little bit neater so that's what we've got um, and so what I've done now is turn this into this which looks nice don't it now you think I've used all pastel colours and stuff I was getting so bored of spreadsheets like they just look they're not exactly inspiring are they they're not exactly going to brighten your day when you look at them so I've used some colours here and I'll explain what they are. So uh, what I did was I cloned the, the last sheet with the normal Poisson uh, and adjusted it for XG. Um, so if you can see, it's the same principle with the, um, with the score matrix, which calculates the correct scores. Uh, and I've got the attacking and defensive strength pulled in from the previous sheet. So it's all the same as it is with the Poisson. Um, but I used XG for this. Um, and then, so these figures here are automatically cal calculated as XG. I've then imported the Poisson one, so I've run the same fixtures through the normal Master Poisson that we use. Master Poisson is still funny, isn't it? Um, and got the value odds for Poisson here, and I've copied them over into here so that we've got the XG goals odds and the Poisson odds. Uh, I've then just calculated the difference between the two and I've also put the real odds in so you can look at what sort of value we're getting although I'm not going to be mentioning the value in this video purely because it depends on whether you're using XG or Poisson as to whether you're getting value or not so you can look at that yourself if you want and decide uh, which one you want later on I'm going to be doing my predictions for the games tonight like I did on Saturday which came out amazingly well I don't expect them to come out as well this afternoon but I'm going to give it a go anyway uh, and with that, I'll be using the Poisson 2.0 model and I'll be using the um, the real odds and looking at value that way. So here we go. Let's have a look at what's going on here. So here you can see um, the XG and the Poisson. And the red, so the blue is always going to be XG and that lines up with the score. So these are the blue XG predicted scores. Uh, and the yellow is the Poisson and these are the yellow scores. And then the green, if it's green, it means that the um, XG goals is higher than the 
Poisson, which basically means there's um, less chance of that team winning, although it's green. It means that there's less chance of that outcome, I guess, um, because the odds on XG are higher than the odds on Poisson. So if it's red, that means there's a higher chance of that outcome occurring because it means the odds are lower on XG than there are on Poisson. So we're looking at this from a from an XG perspective, so uh, rather than a Poisson perspective. So we're using XG as the driver and comparing it to Poisson rather than the other way around. So with this first game, Bristol versus Coventry, we can see there is actually quite a discrepancy in this, and this is good. This is what I was hoping to see, to be honest, which we didn't see in the um, Premier League games because I'd messed it up. So I really appreciate Herbie pointing that out. Um, and so we can see here that we've got Bristol with the XG goals way out at 4.39 to win, whereas with Poisson, we've got 2.53, which makes them favourites. Uh, only slight favourites. It looks a pretty tight outcome with Poisson. Uh, XG goal suggests that it should be a little bit um, shorter, well, a lot shorter to Coventry. So as you can see, XG suggests a lower chance of a Bristol win and a higher chance of a Coventry win, which sort of is in line with the with the league table. Um, so basically, what this is saying, and it, it'll be a common theme throughout the throughout the uh, selections, is even though Coventry perhaps haven't scored the goals that they should have. XG suggests that they've had a lot of good chances and they create chances and they should score more than they have, basically. Um, so if you're doing it on XG, then you'd suggest that Coventry have got a better chance of winning because chances are chances are they'll convert some of those goals eventually. I mean, this is where it's all open to interpretation, isn't it? If you carry on uh, creating brilliant chances but have consistently not got anyone to score, what good is the XG statistic? You could argue um, it's all well and good creating brilliant chances if you miss ninety percent of those chances consistently. Um, if it's due to a sort of rough patch and a bit of variance, and you know your strikers eventually pick up and start converting those goals, that's what it sort of assumes. But that's all well and good. But what if what if they don't? <laughs> what if you've got consistently bad strikers? And that's not I don't mean that for country or for anyone in particular. It's just a it's where people or where I struggle sometimes with XG goals. But you can see anyway, there's, there is quite a variance there, uh, and it actually switches who they who the winner of the game would be depending on which stats you use. Uh, Middlesbrough West Brom again, it's got a lower chance of a Middlesbrough win, but this one's got a much higher chance of a West Brom win. Um, and this sort of, I can see the logic in this. West Brom do create a lot of chances and do miss a lot of chances, uh, especially lately. Uh, although they haven't been creating quite as many lately, which. <laughs> Yeah, you can get too too deep into the weeds and it can't, you know. I'll just tell you what the stats are saying. So the stats in here are saying that West Brom have got a much higher chance of winning this match uh, than Poisson suggests and then even the real odds suggest. So if you're using XG, you'd be backing West Brom in this one, wouldn't you, I think, uh, rather than rather than the favourites who are actually Middlesbrough. Hull Barnsley, again, uh, a higher chance of an away win with this one with Barnsley, but it's, it, it's a decent... A decent jump from um, 3.09 to 5.01 if you go to Poisson, but they're still the underdogs. Um, so it does give you a higher chance of uh, an away win, but it's still not really going to affect your thinking, I don't think. Preston-Nottingham. So this one's got a higher chance of a Preston home win or a draw and a lower chance of a Forest win. So this would be one where you could be possibly looking to lay Forest based on XG. Uh, the Poisson odds would suggest that a Forest... A forest win is um, a strong outcome, but XG suggests that it's got a higher chance of a Preston win. So, some conflict there again. Uh, Red in Blues. So this suggests that Blues have got a good chance of a better chance of winning. Not massive, to be fair. It's pretty pretty even, isn't it? I haven't even written anything for this one. It's basically sort of the same. Uh, a slightly better chance for Blues. Um, yeah, I can see where that might come from. I'm not commenting <laughs> on what's going to happen in that game. Stoke versus Luton, pretty consistent, isn't it? It's a minus 0.15 is the biggest change. Um, so they're they're pretty pretty level, really. Uh, Fulham Peterborough, I mean, this one's got a massive change in terms of the chances of a Peterborough win or a Peterborough draw, but I think that's more to do with the sort of, I don't know, the, the ranges that the two use. It's not... <laughs> It, they're still massive out, outsiders, aren't they? Um, so you're never going to get 137 to odds 
on any game ever. Um, so it's irrelevant really how big that is and how big that is and how big that is. And how big that is. So it's kind of like, it's kind of irrelevant. It's still saying they're long out, outsiders. Um, XG in Millwall, uh, Derby versus Millwall, suggesting a Millwall win as opposed to a, a Derby win. So the Poisson would suggest a Derby win uh, and XG would actually suggest uh, the opposite would suggest a Millwall win. Quite a big swing there. Um, so we know that Derby don't create a lot of chances. Um, from the XG stats, they don't. Yeah, they don't score a lot of goals, but they also don't create a lot of goals. So it's not a case of them missing loads, a hat full of chances, which is why the XG goals doesn't sort of prop them up any. It doesn't mean. It, the, the data doesn't suggest that they're creating the, the chances and they're just lacking that killer instinct or a bit of luck or variance in front of the goal. The data actually says they don't create a lot of chances at home or away, to be fair, but they don't create a lot of chances, hence why they're not scoring a lot of goals. So you're not going to get out of jail by saying, oh, we're just missing a load of really good chances. It's suggesting they don't make them. So the XG goals is suggesting a, a Millwall win in this one, which is interesting. Uh, QPR Blackpool, slightly higher chance of a Sheffield win, um, but it's pretty consistent really. Anything below one, I, I think, in terms of the variance is, is kind of uh, negligent. There's not much point with that. And Sammy Sheffield Blackburn, so, I mean, a really slight change there. And maybe a slightly less chance of a draw, but it, it's kind of, yeah, irrelevant. So looking through those, I think you'd, you'd probably agree that it's the, the Derby Millwall game uh, that shows a, 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 quite a variance. Um, there's quite a lot of variance in Preston, Nottingham, Nottingham in Forest. I've never called them Nottingham before. Um, and then Middlesbrough, West Brom is the big one, isn't it as well? And then if you want to have a look through the score lines, you can. Um, I don't want to don't want to spoon feed you all that. You can see that uh, as and when. So yeah, I, I thought I wanted to show you that just because the last one didn't give a true picture of how XG can change things. Um, it's interesting. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'm not going to be changing the Poisson pack, that's for sure. Um, but it's it's something that I do want to keep in the back of my mind and sort of think about how I might incorporate that in the future. Um, stay tuned because later there'll be another video today um, with my predictions, <laughs> just because it's a bit of fun for me to do on these games. Um, I won't be basing it on XG. I'll be basing it on Poisson like I did on Saturday to keep it consistent. Um, so yeah, I'll try and get that out later today. But thanks for watching and I hope you found this interesting.